Spite Labs, and we're sitting down today with the crew from Spite to talk about all things oxygen and yeast. We are in beautiful sunny San Diego today at White Labs Global Headquarters. I'm excited to share a couple beers and see what the users submitted. I'm Neva from White Labs. I'm Ryan from Spike. I'm Ryan from Spike. You asked us questions and hopefully we'll do our best to answer them. We're gonna answer them. Or hopefully. Answer. We're gonna do our best to answer them. Fingers crossed. We got We're gonna answer them. No words. You've got questions, we've got answers. Let's dive into this. Maybe. So Christy from Instagram wanted to ask White Labs, why is oxygenation important prior to fermentation? So oxygen is really important for yeast prior to fermentation because we want to give yeast the best chance possible to ferment the beer all the way. Mm -hmm. And without oxygen, they can't really grow, metabolize, and the metabolism is what we want to happen. So the yeast can take the sugars from the wort, convert them into CO2 and alcohol, which is why most people are probably making beer. Um, so that gives them the best success. Oxygen is super important for yeast. Nice. Next up, we have a question from Andre from Facebook. What happens if I don't oxygenate my wort? You're gonna have bad beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's probably not gonna be the best. Um, yeast really need the oxygen, so you really run the risk of stuck fermentation, which means the beer might not finish. You'll you'll result in sweeter beer, um, not as dry as you want, the quality just won't be there. So, you know, that's why we always tell people to oxygenate. If you don't, you run the risk of making a beer that's maybe not the best. Mm -hmm. James from Instagram asked, what are the ideal conditions for yeast to flourish? You know, there's a lot of conditions of your wort that's gonna affect the ability for that oxygen to dissolve and in return affect the way the yeast metabolizes. Right? We like to talk about White Labs being a flavor company quite a bit. And those parameters in which the yeast are gonna be introduced, including the amount of oxygen that's dissolved, can be very impactful. So temperature of your work, gravity of your work, can all affect the solubility of oxygen in that and should be considered when looking at how much oxygen to infuse because an ultra high gravity beer of you know, 11, 10 compared to something that's 1050, the yeast and the amount of oxygen that it needs is gonna change. Yeah, to keep it going, keep it in suspension, not let it fall out, not stall. Exactly. Gotcha. The what stall? No stall. No stall. Don't, like don't want the stall. No. Kevin from Facebook asked, what is the Spike O2 kit? How does it actually work? That's a great question, Kevin. Well, the Spike O2 kit is a simple way for you to get oxygen into your wort to have healthy fermentation. So up here, you got a nice little dial that allows you to control the flow rate of oxygen going into your wort. And here is a dial that is showing how much oxygen is left in your tank and we conveniently developed a way for you to hook it up to a red o2 tank that you can get from a lo your local hardware store from you know around the nation you can easily accessible and then you hook it up to your carb stone and add some o2 to your wort in your fermenter pretty easy easy peasy, easy peasy lemon squeezy all right the next question is from tim from facebook what is the difference between aeration and oxygenation Air is air and oxygen is oxygen. Air is made up Crazy. of only a third oxygen. So that is the important distinction, right? Air is three different gases. Oxygen is one thing. So that's gonna really have a huge effect on how you're gonna dissolve oxygen, which is what you want in your wort, and not air. So that's important. All right, guys. Steve from Facebook, how long do you have to oxygenate? Great question, Steve. We've done a lot of testing on this internally. We have. Uh, we found the sweet spot was about 30 seconds per gallon at one quarter liters Correct. per minute. Uh, we found that kind of gave that sweet spot where we're not spending a lot of oxygen getting this beer ready to really ferment and getting us all the way there, not under oxygenating. Uh, Chris from Instagram asks, how do you know when your oxygen bottle is getting low? Great question, Chris. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, Chris, there's a handy dandy dial right here. That'll tell you the level of O2 in your tank. So you know when your green is good, yellow is better go get a can soon. Red means you're in trouble. You better have a backup ready to go. Oh, that's Cheers cool. running out of gas. Yeah. yeah, keep it, keep the gas alive. It's a real tragedy. All right, so Ian from Instagram asks, can you over oxygenate your yeast? And if so, what's 
impact? It depends, but over oxygenating is going to be a far better problem than under oxygenating. If you over oxygenate, you're going to have a lot of biomass growth. You're going to have a lot of yeast growth. And yeast growth impact flavor. So dialing that in just right is going to be key to make the best beer possible. I think that's why the oxygenation kit is so impactful. You know exactly what you've put into your fermenter. So very helpful. It's a good tool to have in your tool chest. Liz from Facebook asks, when should I oxygenate my wort? You're gonna to wanna to oxygenate at knockout. So when you chill your wort to the proper pitching temperature, you know, if you're fermenting an ale, say upper 60s Fahrenheit, lagers somewhere in the 50s, and you're gonna to wanna to oxygenate prior to pitching your yeast and ensure all of that oxygen is dissolved and ready to be an available nutrient for the yeast once it gets introduced into your wort. Correct. And when is too late to oxygenate? The risk of oxygenating late would be oxidative characteristics from your malt primarily. Gotcha. Right? If you're adding oxygen too late, you're going to begin to oxidize that beer. It's going to change the characteristics of your malt quicker than the yeast can actually absorb that oxygen. So it's a balance. So my rule of thumb is if it hasn't yet reached halfway um, in terms of the gravity drop, you're probably still safe to oxygenate. The yeast are still active enough that they'll consume all that oxygen. So there are some home brewers that will chill overnight and then pitch their yeast. It would be preferential to oxygenate still prior to your yeast when that wort hits its proper temperature. Ideally, it would be within the first hour. If you're chilling overnight and it needs to take 12 hours, I would still suggest oxygenating prior to pitching your yeast. Okay, awesome. This question has been brought to you by Pure Pitch <laughs> Right here. No big deal. Stop shop solution to all your fermentation. It's pretty damn good. You should definitely yes. get it. Dan from Instagram asked, what is better, inline oxygenating or oxygenating once your wort is in your fermenter? Great question, Dan. We, we looked at both ways in kind of the research and development of this oxygenation kit. What we found is getting your beer into the fermenter with the precise measurability of the oxygenation kit, we were able to really dial in that, that sweet spot of oxygen. Inline oxygenating brings in other variables, especially on the homebrew scale, uh, flow rate, pump speed, etc. We just felt with, with the oxygenation kit, it was easiest to get to the fermenter and, and you know exactly how much, how much oxygen you're, you're adding. Exactly, real easy. All right, this next question is from Johnny from Facebook. How important is oxygenation to high gravity brewing? Oxygen for high gravity brewing is actually way more important than just regular brewing. Because you're dealing with a lot of things that might stress out the yeast, you really gotta give them the best chance for starting that fermentation. Because the, the sugar is all the things, it's just a lot. Um, so you really wanna oxygenate, and you have to oxygenate actually a little bit more than you normally would. Um, and you also wanna pitch more, which is why we developed Pure Pitch Next Gen, double the pitch without a starter. No big deal. No big deal. Because <laughs> you know. happy yeast equals happy beer. Happy beer equals happy brewers. Oh, full circle. Oh. I love it. Well done. That was a, you have a future career in an interview. Both of us. No, not you. <laughs> Name All right. So one of our most asked questions from home brewers, if they oxygenate using the splashing in a fermenter or a paddle slosh it or an aquarium pump or even the, you know shaking the entire fermenter, why aren't these good reasons or good ways to oxygenate your beer, your wort? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, number one, shaking a carboy or fermenter is a pain. Using a paddle to slosh around the beer offers contaminants from the air that we don't want. And I think the, the biggest one is you're not sure how much oxygen you've added uh, by just randomly shaking or moving a paddle. So you're unsure of how much you've put into that fermenter. Gotcha. Yeah, and remember that air is only about 20% so you're getting a fifth of the oxygen actually dissolved in there. So it'll take you that five times as long to really get the dissolved oxygen rate that you're looking for. At least. At least. Okay, this question is from John on Facebook. Knowing there's a lot of options for yeast on the market, what sets White Labs Pure Pitch Next Generation apart? Yeah, thanks for that question, John. So Pure Pitch Next Gen is the latest development from us. And really the important part about this is that it's double the pitch of what you were getting before with the original Pure Pitch. And our whole goal with developing this was to make sure that 
brewers and home brewers were getting the right pitching rate for an optimal fermentation. And for us, what we found is it's that seven and a half million cells per mil. And that's what you're gonna get with this package every time. Um, and we make recommendations for high gravity brewing, for cold lager brewing, um, and all of that can be found on the package, on the QR code that we've included, so you can get your specified pitch rates for whatever beer that you might be making. Mm -hmm. I also really like the packaging because you don't have to use scissors to open it, you just sanitize it, untwist it, dump it in, you're good to go. Yep. Genius. Awesome. Hopefully awesome. you guys love it. Yeah, we do, because we got it before everyone else did. <laughs> Jordan from Instagram asks, other than oxygenating your warp before fermentation, what else can be done to promote happy yeast? Um, you could sing to it. Ooh, lullabies are here are really good. That's really important. Um, <laughs> but how do you really define happiness? <laughs> it's making more yeast. That Reproducing. Oxygen helps with that. Uh, nutrients help with that. Uh, Temperature? Temperature, warmer temperatures help with that. Uh, all those things make yeast happy, besides singing to it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, that was great. You happy with that one? Lullabies. You know, I'll technically put him to sleep. Sure. So he should no, no. probably do something a little upbeat. I'm Ryan. You've asked questions, and we're going to do our best to answer them. Maybe. Maybe we're going to answer them. No, we're going to answer them. We're going to answer them. Ryan. Confidence. Perfect, we're done. Good. Oh, crazy. I drank in a bar. Sorry about that. It's like our, yeah. Wow.